Welcome to Electromine. Now let's take a look at impact craters across the surface of Venus. Just like with volcanoes, they are found everywhere across the surface and more or less evenly distributed. Now that again is a very strange phenomenon because typically impact craters will be found more often in places where the surface is very old and less often in places where the surface is, more, is much younger. But on Venus, it seems to appear that the surface across the whole planet has about the same age. The impact density tells us a lot about the age of the surface of any moon or any planet. And in the case of Jupiter, the fact that there are almost a thousand impact craters across the surface, all of them either three kilometers or bigger, seems to indicate that the surface is somewhere between 300 and 600 million years old all across the planet which means that about 300 to 600 million years ago, there was this enormous resurfacing event. And we'll talk about that so, uh, uh, later. But let's take a look at what is going on here. Well, here's a beautiful picture of three impact craters varying in diameter from about 37 kilometers to about 50 kilometers. Those are very large craters. Again, on the surface of Venus, we do not find impact craters that are less than three kilometers because any object too small simply does not survive through that very thick dense atmosphere of Venus. It's very thick in this direction, it's very dense, and so by the time it reaches the surface it probably has disintegrated. So knowing that the ratio typically of the size of a meteor to the size of a crater is about one to ten. In other words, a one kilometer object will make a crater about 10 kilometers across. This is a rough, a rough estimate because if it's made out of metal, of course, it can be smaller, making more damage. If it's rock, it tends to pulverize more. And so there's a little bit difference in the size ratio between the meteor and the impact crater. But typically it's about one to 10. So there's impact craters ranging in size from three all the way up to 280 kilometers. So some very big objects have hit Venus in the last three to 600 million years. So we can say then that meteors should be of a size of about 300 meters, which is a thousand feet across, typically to as much as 28 kilometers across. 28 kilometers, wow, that's, uh, hmm, that's almost 20 miles. That's like 17, 18 miles across. Also some very big objects. Matter of fact, the impact crater of the Yucatan Peninsula that was caused by an impact on the Earth about 65 million years ago wiped out all the dinosaurs and much of the life on the Earth. And so that was a crater smaller than this crater right here. So just like Earth, Venus has been hit by some very large objects. So interesting enough, of the almost 1,000 craters that are distributed evenly across the surface of the planet, 85% of them appear to be in fairly pristine condition. In other words, we don't see very strong evidence of erosion, meaning those craters look very, very much like they happened, well, not quite yesterday, but recently. On the Earth, it's a very different story. We see craters that have impacted the Earth perhaps a billion years ago, but they are to a, they are at a very large degree of deterioration. We can barely see the rim formation of those craters. And then other craters that look fairly new on the Earth. So that's in response to the erosion action on the Earth and also that the Earth is constantly resurfacing itself. Mountains are being pushed up and they are eroded away. And so through that action and a lot of volcanic action, all the craters have all but disappeared on the Earth. On Venus, that doesn't appear to be the case. Either we find craters that are fairly pristine or we find craters that are virtually non-existent. In other words, we don't see them at all. So again, implying that something very spectacular must have happened on the surface of Venus about three to 600 million years ago. So what else do we have on the board here? So if we imagine that about a thousand impacts had significant impacts, leaving craters of three kilometers or greater, uh, and if they were caused by impacts between, that happened between now and about 300 to 600 million years ago, let's say 300 million years to make it easy, that means that every 300,000 years a very significant impact hit the surface of Venus. Now you may say, well 300,000 years, that's such a long time. Well, if on average every 300,000 years we have an impact, then after 300 million years we'll have a thousand impacts. And 
They range with, they were caused by objects, meteors, that range in size of over 100 meters, probably more like 300 meters, all the way to 28 kilometers across. So we talk about very significant impacts. And we can assume that if Venus experienced those kinds of impacts, Earth must have experienced the same kind of impacts. And so if we can assume that the Earth uh, was, uh, was subjected to the same kind of bombardment over the last 300 million years, we can say that the Earth was probably hit by about a thousand very sizable meteors. And of course, we know that 65 million years ago, we had that huge impact that caused this huge crater of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. So you can see how studying the location, the diversity, the size, and the distribution of impact craters and what they actually look like, whether or not they've experienced a lot of deterioration not to, due to volcanic activity or due to other factors such as weather and erosion, we can really figure out the history of what must have happened to the planet. And again, it looks like not a lot geologically happened to Venus in the last three to 600 million years ago, but the fact that there's virtually no remnant of craters beyond that age then something very drastic must have happened then. And so we'll, uh, we'll take a look and see what kind of theories they've come up with to try and explain that one. But that's what the story tells us about the impact craters on the surface of Venus.